Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for checking out this channel. My name is Shane Walls and I make my living as a fine art nature photographer and I'm currently out searching for wildflowers all the way from the California desert to the sea. And in all my videos, I mention my Rolex Explorer 2, how it's the ultimate tool watch and I use it everywhere I go. Each one of those videos always gets a ton of comments saying I shouldn't be wearing the Rolex, I should be wearing a G-Shock for what I do. Well now, I took that to heart, I purchased a G-Shock, and now I've had both the Rolex and the G-Shock on my wrist for the past month. Here are my thoughts. Hello and welcome to my Laguna Beach Art Studio. Thank you so much for checking out this channel. Today we are gonna answer that age old question, which watch is better, a Rolex or a G-Shock? Now I know, I know, this is a fine wine grown in Foxton Canyon in the Santa Barbara area. And this is a raisin grown just off the five freeway. Both have their pluses, both have their minuses. I've now had both on for the last month that I've been traveling, photographing wildflowers. And here are my thoughts. Now, if you're new to my channel, watches are an intricate tool and very important to my photography. So it's, it's very important to me to pick and make sure I have the right tool for the job. So I came up with this list over this last month of what's really, what I look for in a watch, what's important to me. I'm trying to not, I'm, I'm gonna have my personal opinions. That's a given but I don't want to have too much. I'm not going to have, oh, the looks of the watch, oh, the history of the watch, because that's so subjective. Here's the list I came up with to really kind of show to you rough and tough, out in the field, what I need in a watch, and I'm going to rate these watches accordingly. Going down the list, I rated these watches for short-term durability, long-term durability, value for money, accuracy, how easy is it to obtain, the loom, legibility, outdoor functionality, keeping the watch powered, ease of use, water resistance, appropriate for every occasion, comfort, wearing experience. Now just to get a few caveats out of the way, these are both my watches, I own both of them. This watch, the G-Shock was actually given to me by a viewer to test out. I actually liked it so much that I purchased it for this month long test as well as all my scoring is based on how I use the watch, how I need it as a photographer. So it's gonna be different for everybody, but let's jump into it. For starters, the elephant in the room, the G-Shock as of filming right now, data filming, this goes for about $130. This goes for $9,700. So quite a discrepancy. So I know that I know there's higher end G-Shocks I could get to compare the two. I know this is again, this is a fine wine. This is a raisin. The reason I chose these two is it's really just about toughness. And to be honest with you, this is my favorite G-Shock. I tried some of the higher end ones. I just like the down and dirty G-Shock. So that's the main reason I chose this one to purchase to do the head to head with the Rolex Explorer 2. Short term durability. I mean, this one's kind of a no brainer. This one goes to the G-Shock. These things for short term, you can drop it. I've beaten the heck out of it. It's hard to break these. The Rolex is also a very, very, very tough watch. One of the toughest mechanical watches, but it still is mechanical and mechanical has its plus and minuses, same as digital. So for this, I rated the Rolex Explorer 2 as a seven and a 10 for the G-Shock. Now, long time durability, I couldn't really test it over just the month with both these watches on my wrist, but it is really important to me, so I thought I would add it. And I'm just gonna take from past experience other watches from these brands to kind of give my rating. And for this, the Rolex has to get a 10 because it's one of those toughest watches, mechanical watches that if you do take care of it, it'll last forever. And I know this, from friends, family who've had Rolexes decades and they still work great, they still wear them. G-Shock, they're not designed 
to last for decades. They're really kind of designed to last four or five years if you're lucky. And I've had, this is my third G-Shock I've owned. My past two broke on me in about year four or five. And that's, that's what I expected from them. They're beat to heck. I treat the Rolex the same pretty much as my G-Shock. I wouldn't throw my Rolex on the ground or I guess I wouldn't throw my G-Shock. G-Shock can handle that. But just as normal everyday wear and tear as you'd be watching, or excuse me, you'd be wearing a watch. That wear and tear, even though you still take care of them, the G-Shock won't last that long. So for this, the scores kind of switch. I give the Rolex a perfect 10 because they are the best at that. They last forever if you take care of them. G-Shock, even if you do take care of them, you're constantly changing the strap. I've had buttons break on them. So the G-Shock is down to a four on this one. Value for money. That was hard to do. That was hard to rate for this because they're two extremely different examples. One's kind of quick and cheap, does what it needs to do. The other one's more robust, lasts for a long, long, long time, even though it's 100 times more expensive. But that being said, the Rolex, I'm still gonna rate high on this one because the romantic side of me, I am very excited to pass this watch down. And I love that idea of spending, I mean, I don't love the idea of spending a lot of money, but spending a lot of money up front, knowing you'll get a return on the back end of that. And that's why I like the Rolex in that way that yes, you're spending a lot of money up front, but it's gonna work for you. It's gonna be part of your equipment. It's gonna be a watch for you for decades upon decades, like I just talked about earlier. The G-Shock, the other side of the spectrum, great value for money in the way that it's a cheap, good, durable watch. So for this one, I'm gonna rate the Explorer at a seven and the G-Shock at a nine. G-Shock was gonna get a 10, but after only having this watch for a month, I already know it's a little bit of the band is starting to tear. Just a little tear, but I, that's why I dropped down from a 10 to a nine. Accuracy, both these watches are extremely accurate, but digital, you just can't really beat accuracy especially on a mechanical watch. It has so many moving parts. So this one, the G-Shock does get a 10. The Rolex still gets an eight because it's incredibly accurate. This watch is only about a quarter second fast today, which is amazing, but you still every once in a while will have to change the time to keep it on the correct time. The G-Shock has a little bit of a, excuse me if I'm not technically right on this, but there's a little bit of a wire and an antenna in this G-Shock, so it'll automatically update itself for the perfect time. So that just makes the G-Shock a little bit more accurate. So the G-Shock on this one's getting a perfect 10 because it's perfectly accurate. And the Rolex is getting an eight because it's still very, very, very accurate. Now, how easy are these watches to obtain? I think this is an important thing to have on the list because if you're new to the watch world, two, three, maybe four years ago now, Rolex just kind of shot up in popularity with COVID, manufacturing, all that kind of stuff. Almost a perfect storm. So Rolexes for a while were pretty much impossible to get. And as far as I know, they're still very difficult to get. This here, purchasing my first Rolex from an AD, and we're gonna do these through AD. So that's the price, this isn't going on the secondary market because you need a ton of money extra. You're paying more money to buy a Rolex than from the AD. So let's just go kind of AD for this session. It took me a little over six months to obtain my Rolex Explorer II through an AD. And that was my first purchase through them. This G-Shock, I just went on G-Shock, I had it three days later. So for this, I'm gonna give the G-Shock, obviously it's a 10 because it's so easy, you can go get one out. You can go pretty much any boutique or watch, a place that sells watches and just pick one up. The Rolex Explorer 2, I'm gonna give a four for this because I'm not 100% sure how easy or hard it is to get. I've heard horror stories that some people were waiting over two years to still get a Rolex Explorer 2. I've heard some people, it's still, it's about, you know, four or five months on a waiting list, which isn't too bad. So that's why I'm gonna rate this a four, but the G-Shock again, you can go out to any place that sells watches and just pick one up. Lumen legibility. This one was kind of surprised over the month I had these two watches. The Rolex Explorer II was far, far superior than the G-Shock on this, just in the way that the Loom, it automatically charges when you're in light, and if you get a good charge on it, the Loom itself, it lasts for pretty much 24 hours. It's so easy. You don't have to do anything to read the watch. And I do a lot of night stuff. And that's where the G-Shock fell short for me is I had to keep pushing this tiny little button to Loom. And on my long exposures, it 
didn't work because the loom or the light on the back of this thing only is on for about a second or so. So it's just to check the time. I needed it longer because some of my exposures are five, six, seven, sometimes up to a minute long. So that was kind of frustrating on that. I looked everywhere in the menu to try to figure out a way that to have the light stay on longer. Couldn't find it. So I don't think there is, if there is, please let me know in the uh, comments. But for now, the Rolex is far superior because you just need to look at it for the legibility. Even during the day, it's just this white dial, this polar dial is so clean, just at a glance, you can read it. Whereas the G-Shock, you kind of have to angle it a little bit just to get the perfect view, not the perfect view, I'm sorry, no. Just to get a better view to be able to read it, but that wasn't so big of a deal in the daylight. The big deal with this is at night, this was very tough and difficult to use in photography. That's why I'm giving this a lower score on the legibility. Lumen legibility, the Rolex Explorer 2 is getting a perfect 10 because it's, it's, it, it's just perfect. It really is, especially for my use. And the G-Shock is only getting a five because again, it was just so frustrating with the short light. Now for outdoor functionality, just kind of a disclaimer, I'm just gonna kind of categorize this as just as an everyday watch use in the outdoors. I'm not including GPS functions or anything on this because I use my phone or tablet for that. Outdoor use of a watch. I scored the Rolex at a nine and the G-Shock at an eight. And let me explain that. The main reason I did that is because again, it's just really about time and exposure for my photographs, how I use this watch. The Rolex, again, you just have to look at it. It's kind of similar to the Loom. That kind of carries over here, whereas the light and the buttons here. Rolex just does one thing and that's all I need it to do. So that's how I'm gonna judge it on. The G-Shock does a hundred different things, which I don't need, but I don't wanna hold it against it, but I kind of am just a little bit because this, this is for my needs. And out in the wilderness, I just really need the time and the date. And the problem with the G-Shock on some of that are these little buttons. I complain that they're little, but also too, they get pushed all the time. It's a little frustrating. That's why I'm only giving this an eight. There's been a few times when I'm either sleeping or out on the field and I'm dressed up in a jacket or something like that. I'll go to look at the time and I've pushed one of the buttons and I'm in a weird menu. And that's a little frustrating. It's not the end of the world, I know, but it's a little frustrating when I'm trying to do something, concentrate on a photograph, and I need to go back and kind of push a few buttons to get back to the main menu when I just want to see the time and do the time down for my exposure. Keeping the watch powered. The G-Shock has a solar system that charges by the sun, obviously. The Rolex has movement and motion. So every time I'm moving or the watch is in motion on my wrist, it charges the watch. Now for this, I was expecting kind of a dead heat. The G-Shock works great in warm weather, the solar. Absolutely perfect, I love the idea of it. The only problem is in the cold, cold weather when I was snow camping in a tent, it was freezing cold and I didn't really see the sun all that much. Plus I had heavy jackets on. The G-Shock Solar actually died on me one time. Rolex never did. We just gotta accept that the G-Shock, it has a battery. I don't fully ever trust anything with batteries. Sunshine, warm, this is great. But again, it died on me because it was just, I think partly because of the temperature also too. And if you look in the little brochure manual on this watch, it says, you know, make sure it's always fully open to the elements so it can charge itself. It was so cold, I was bundled up. This lost charge because it didn't see enough UV sunlight, sunlight, whatever it needs to see. This, I didn't have a problem with the Rolex. Just because it's moving, doesn't matter if it sees the sun or not. I'm always moving, jacket on, jacket off, warm, cold, doesn't matter. So that's why the Rolex outrated the G-Shock 10 to an eight. Onto the ease of use. And I just, I want to watch just to be quick, easy to use. I don't want, I don't need all the extra little things. So it's kind of a monster of its own creation here. For me personally, why it's not scoring as high as the Rolex. Because the Rolex is just simple, elegant, it tells the time. That's all I really need in the day. That's all I really want in a watch. And that's just simple, simple, simple. I'm not technically good at computers or any of that kind of stuff, setting stuff. This manual, sitting down 15, 20 minutes just to read a whole manual, I don't, I don't want to do that. And the problem, this is a simple enough watch, but just real quick example of, I went into a different time zone recently. 
The Rolex took me two seconds, just moved the hour hat into head. Good, I was on the correct time. I just assumed, so assuming, you know the saying, to ask Yumi, and I just assumed the G-Shock would automatically change. I didn't have it set for that. I didn't know how to change it, so then it took me forever to figure out how to change it to the correct time. And I didn't really have the time to figure it out because you know I was getting off a plane, I had to go catch another plane, had to get in a rent a car, and was, there's 10 million things going on. So that was a little frustrating for me. I really enjoy the elegance of the Rolex that's just so simple, simple. I know I'm completely nitpicking here, but that is just personally how I feel. So for ease of use, I rated the Rolex Explorer 2 at a nine and the G-Shock at seven. Water resistance. Both these watches have plenty of water resistance for what I need them for. So I'm just gonna rate the G-Shock at a 10 and the Rolex a nine, just because the G-Shock has a little bit more water resistance than the Rolex Explorer 2 does. Appropriate for every occasion. Now this is a big one for me, just cause I travel so much and have to take so much gear in the way of photography gear, video gear, just everything, camping gear, all that, I don't want to have to bring multiple watches. You know, one watch for the field, one watch for a high-end event, a gallery event, all that kind of stuff. I want just one watch to do everything. And that's where the Rolex Explorer 2 really, really succeeds over almost any watch. Not so much the G-Shock, but almost any type of watch, because this thing can go anywhere and do anything. And I just, the G-Shock is just a little, it's, it's, it's not designed or made for this. It's just not. Hence the price point and you can get nicer G-Shocks, but they're just not designed to really go to elegant or high-end events, you know, gallery unveiling, stuff like that. That's where the Rolex really just jumps ahead of this. And I like to think of this in the way that, you know, in business success, the business world, you don't present yourself for the career or the job you have you present yourself in the way for the career that you want to have. I take that to heart because I'm working so hard, long hours, doing all these different things to build my photography career. No, I'm not going to be shy about it. I want to become a renowned photographer. And that is just, it's so important to me to have something to present myself well in any occasion, again, in the fields or at a high-end event. And it's also one of those, it's one of those things where where in the Rolex, it, does, it sounds silly now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna say it out loud, but it does give me a little bit more confidence, more so than I love wearing the G-Shock. I think it's a cool watch. I feel cool when I wear it, but it's a different type of feeling when you have the Rolex Explorer, especially the Explorer 2 on my wrist. It just, that little extra confidence. And you know those, uh, it's those times when you're sitting in a room and you're next to a acclaimed photographer who, you know, is has work in the Smithsonian or something like that. You just feel a little bit more like you belong when you're wearing your Rolex Explorer 2. I know this sounds so stupid, it does, but it's that little extra confidence in such a rough and tumble, hard environment, the photography world, to get ahead, you gotta take every little advantage that you can. And it might seem stupid to some people, some people, you might know what I'm talking about, but just that little, little dose of extra confidence goes a long way. And I didn't mean to harp so much on this category. It's just a watch that can do everything. Rolex Explorer 2 is one of those very, very, very few watches that can. It's good in the field and it's good in high-end luxury events. You don't find that that often. That's why the Rolex is getting a perfect 10 on this one and the G-Shock is getting a six. Comfort. These are both extremely comfortable watches. I like the weight a little bit more on the Rolex, just because I'd like, it's a tool watch. I like to feel like I have a tool on my wrist. That being said though, the G-Shock, half the time I forget I'm even wearing it. So that just means it is more comfortable. So the G-Shock's getting a perfect 10 on this one. Rolex Explorer 2 is getting a nine. Wearing experience. now. I enjoyed both these watches very much. I mean, like I said at the beginning of the video, I like the G-Shock so much, I actually went out and purchased my own. This one will, Perfect 10 will go to the Rolex once again on this, because I think I covered that in the earlier categories about why the Rolex Explorer 2, especially to me, is so special. But the G-Shock is a great, 
great watch and I'll give it an eight. It's just, again, we covered it before. It's just those little tiny things. It's not really the watch's fault. It's just my personal opinion, my personal preferences. Now, if you look at the final score and you can see it, this is an amazing watch. It went toe to toe with a Rolex Explorer. That's pretty much a hundred times more expensive than it. So that's, that's an incredible watch. And it's, it's a watch built for a certain function and purpose. And it'll do that function and purpose extremely, extremely well. I feel bad that one day I'm gonna have to throw this away. I mean, that's my own problem, but it is what it is. It's a great watch and I'm, I feel fortunate to have it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you liked what you saw, give us a like, hit subscribe. We'll be doing more of these. We'll also have some more travel videos coming up for the photography side of my business. Cheers and thanks again.